Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now in the season of the Epiphany of our Lord. The Epiphany of our Lord is all about the many ways that our Lord Jesus Christ reveals himself to people. The first gospel for the season of the Epiphany of our Lord is all about our Lord revealing himself to some magi by means of the sign in the heavens, a star that led them to the Christ child. This week, the gospel tells us about God the Father when he tore the heavens open in order to talk about Jesus as Jesus submitted himself to a baptism by John in the Jordan. The gospel also tells us that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus as a dove. Today's gospel is an epiphany, not just of Jesus, but also of God the Father and God the Son and the God the Spirit. Jesus is still on his journey to the cross. His journey from his throne in heaven to take on our humanity as a single cell in Mary's womb was just the beginning. He grew in her womb, just like any other baby boy. And on Christmas, we celebrated his birth. He lived his life under the law, just like any other human being. The only difference is that he kept the law perfectly. He never sinned. The entire time that he grew, both inside and outside of his mother, he carried our sin, your sin, my sin. Up until the events of today's gospel, he carried them privately, quietly. Very few people even knew who he was. When it was time for him to go public, he came to the Jordan River, to John the Baptist. He came to be baptized. Now John was proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the natural question is, why did Jesus have John baptize him? Jesus never sinned. He didn't need to repent. He didn't need forgiveness of sins. What was Jesus doing in the water with John? The best answer to this question that I know of is contained in the prayer that Martin Luther wrote for the rite of baptism that we just prayed not too long ago as Reese became God's child through baptism. Luther's prayer says this, Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. You see, Jesus submitted to baptism in order to stand with you, in order to save you from your sin. In the water of John's baptism, Jesus publicly proclaimed that he carried your sin. When Jesus is baptized, the sins 
that were washed away from sinners, including Reese's this morning, were stuck to him. At his baptism, Jesus comes to be a sinner, covered with our sins. And not just one person's sins, but the sins of the entire world, past, present, and future. In the gospel, according to Luke, that we just heard, both God the Father and God the Holy Spirit acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, chosen to earn salvation for you. Our gospel proclaimed, Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This reverses the result of sin that God proclaimed after the first sin when he said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed the cherubim with a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So in Adam is our sin that closed off the way to paradise. The account of Jesus' baptism informs us that in Jesus, the way to paradise is open once again. For as Jesus prayed, the heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit descended on him. And the Father declared Jesus to be his beloved Son, the Messiah, the one anointed to earn salvation for all people. As Jesus journeyed to the cross, his baptism by John is a major milestone. This event is second in importance only to the crucifixion and resurrection. The Holy Spirit anointed the Christ in both his humanity and his divinity. God the Father acknowledges him as his son. His ministry is carrying our sins to the cross has become public knowledge. One of the demonstrations of the importance of this event comes after Jesus ascended into heaven. Judas the betrayer had hung himself and the remainder of Jesus' disciples came together to choose a replacement for him. And Peter reminded the others of the qualifications for that replacement. He said, One of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness of his resurrection. Many of the men that Jesus chose were originally disciples of John. Like them, the replacement for Judas must be able to bear witness to the baptism of Jesus by John. The baptism of Jesus forms the beginning point of the witness. Our reading for today informs us of this incredible epiphany. The heavens were opened. God the Son was in the water. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove. God the Father spoke to the crowds. John the Baptist witnessed this epiphany along with all his followers. And some of those followers would later become Jesus' disciples. However, not all the witnesses of this epiphany were friendly witnesses. This epiphany was also a message to the devil and his evil angels. God the Son had taken up human flesh. He is bringing the battle to the earth. This is the one who will crush the serpent's head. Jesus, full of the Spirit, is ready to battle the temptations of the devil in the wilderness. He will fight for you, and he will win. When the season of Lent starts, we'll we'll read the temptation that the devil brought against Jesus. Two of the temptations begin with the words, if you are the Son of God. 
The other temptation asked Jesus to worship the devil as God. All three temptations attack the identity of Jesus as God. The identity that the Father proclaimed at Jesus' birth. Jesus endured the full fire of Satan's temptation. He endured not only the temptation in the wilderness, but Satan never really stopped tempting Jesus. He tempted him through his friends and followers. And he continued to tempt Jesus, even as Jesus hung on the cross. As Jesus hung on the cross, those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple in three days and rebuild it, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Even as Jesus hung on the cross, the passers-by were still challenging the words of the Father that was proclaimed in this morning's Gospel. Jesus endured these temptations as we never will. Jesus' perfect perseverance under Satan's fiery temptations was part of the mission to open heaven for us. The epiphany that we heard about this morning also marks Jesus as the target of God's wrath. In our epistle today, the Apostle Paul says, We know that our old self was crucified with him, nor the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. You see, Jesus took your place. He was the target of God's wrath, a wrath that was so severe that Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus suffered the original baptism of fire for you. He fulfilled John's prophecy of baptism by fire in order to open heaven for you. Jesus blazed a trail through death that leads to life. He conquered death and he rose from the dead. Through his triumph, the way to heaven is open. Here at his baptism, Jesus took our place under the burden of our sin. As our substitute, he carried out God's plan perfectly. The mission that Jesus began at his baptism was successful. He opened a way to heaven. He offers to join us to himself through baptism, just as we witnessed this morning. The Holy Spirit gives us the faith that receives that offer. God the Father adopts us into his family by that faith. And when the time comes for us to leave this world, the heavens will open, the angels will carry us home, and we will hear the Father say, You are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.